In this lesson, I'm going to show you how to evaluate square roots and cube roots. But before we get to taking the root, let's just talk about squares and cubes. A square is what you get when you multiply a number by itself. So for example, if you take 2, multiply it by itself, you get 4. 4 is a square. And you can also rewrite 2 times 2 as 2 squared equals 4. So any whole number squared, you're going to get a perfect square product. Now, what about if we did uh, 3 times 3? What if we square 3? We get 9. And here you write the exponent as 3 because that's the number you're multiplying. And your exponent is 2 because you're multiplying that number by itself 2 times. The exponent tells you how many times to multiply the base by itself. Now, what about if we wanted to do cubes? Cubes are similar, except that it's multiplying the number by itself three times. So 2 times 2 times 2 equals 8. 8 is a cube. And we can rewrite this as an exponent by using the, the base becomes the number you're multiplying by itself. And the exponent is how many times you do that multiplication. And in the case of a cube, it's always going to be 3 because you multiply the number by itself three times. And you can do another example if you did... Um, 3 times 3 times 3, and this equals 27, and this is your cube. And to rewrite this as an exponent, you get 3 raised to the third, or 3 cubed. Now let's talk about how we take the root of a number, and I'm just going to erase some of my work here and then start fresh, so hang on a second. So I've left behind some of my work, and, and I'm going to show you why. So I want to talk about taking the root. And now the root, in either case, in the square root or the cube root, the root is a number that you multiplied by itself to get the square or the cube. So let's talk about this example over here on the left side. We got to 4 by multiplying 2 times 2. So 2 are the roots of 4, which means that if I ask you to take the square root of 4, and that's how that looks, you're going to give me an answer of 2. And think about now the cube. When you go over here to the cube, the cube is the same thing. The roots are the, is the number that you multiply by itself three times to get that answer. So if I ask you to take the cube root, and we indicate cube with a little 3 in the symbol here, the cube root of 27, you would tell me 3, because 3 is the number uh, that you multiplied by itself three times to get the cube, which is 27. Now there are a couple other things to pay attention to. 4 is a perfect square. And what that means is you could take the square root of that number and you get a whole number. So perfect squares are made by multiplying a whole number by itself. Cubes, perfect cubes, is a similar thing. You could take the cube root of a perfect cube and get a whole number as an answer. And you make perfect cubes by multiplying a whole number by itself three times. Now, not every number is a perfect cube or a perfect square. And for example, you can think about something like taking the square root of 26. To think about this, you'd ask yourself, is, are there any two whole numbers, or any whole number, sorry, that I can multiply by itself two times to get a product of 26? And the answer is no. The closest you can come is 5 times 5 equals 25. And then the next whole number is 6, and 6 times 6 equals 36. So you know that the square root of 26 will fall somewhere in between 5 and 6, but your answer is going to be an irrational number, and it's going to be a non-terminating decimal that goes on forever. So it's not going to be easy to take the square root of a non-perfect square. And the same thing goes for cubes. You know, you can't take the cube root and get a whole number of something that's not a perfect cube. For example, if I ask you to find the cube root of 7, the closest you can come, you got 2 times 2 times 2 equals 8, and under that is 1 times 1 times 1, and that equals 1. So the cube root will fall somewhere in between 1 and 2, but again, it'll be an irrational non-terminating decimal. Now there's one more thing to think about when it comes to cube roots and square roots, and that has to do with positive and negative numbers. Now let me get rid of some of this work again and show you what I'm talking about. Okay, clean slate. So here we've got, again, 2 squared equals 4. If I ask you to take the square root of 4, we've already determined that the root is 2. But hang on, there's one more root. Let me show you what I mean. So if you multiply, what happens when you go negative 2 times negative 2? You get positive 4. 
look at that. Negative 2 times negative 2 equals positive 4. That means that the square root of 4 has two roots, positive and negative 2, and we indicate that both positive and negative 2 are the roots using this symbol here with the positive sign above the negative sign. And that's because that when you multiply a number by itself, a positive number multiplied by a positive number equals positive, a negative number times a negative number equals positive. So a square root it always has two roots, positive and negative. What happens with the cube root when it comes to positive and negative? Well, remember that a cube root is you know, you're reversing the cube process. And to cube something, you have to multiply a number by itself three times. Let's try that with a negative number. Let's try negative 3 times negative 3 times negative 3. So if you multiply the first two negative 3's, you get positive 9. Now you bring down the multiply by negative 3 here, and you're going to get a negative answer. So you cannot have a negative cube root. And that's because you can't multiply a number by itself three times and get a negative number. I mean a positive number, I'm sorry. So the, if you're taking the square, the cube root of 27, positive 27, you cannot have a negative cube root. Now let's try evaluating some roots for ourselves and see what we've learned. Okay, here's one. Let's take the cube root of 64. Now think to yourself, is there any number that you can multiply by itself three times to get 64? If you're not sure, try some smaller numbers. What if we do 3 times 3 times 3, we've done this one a couple times, and you know the answer is 27. Well, that's less than 64, so we need to try the next whole number up, and I'm hoping that this, this number here, 64, is a perfect cube, so I can get a whole number answer. Let's try 4 times 4 times 4. 4 times 4 is 16. If you multiply by 4 again, you get 64. All right, cool. So that's what we're trying to find. We're trying to find the cube root, and we have 4 times 4 times 4 equals 64. So the cube root of 64 equals 4. And again, this can't be negative because you can't multiply a negative number by itself three times and get a positive answer. Let's try another one. Let's try taking the square root of 49. So again, if you can't remember which two numbers multiply, or I'm sorry, which number multiplied by itself two times gives you 49, you can guess and test a little bit. So let's try something like 6 times 6. 6 times 6 equals 36, so that's a little bit too low. Try 7 times 7. 7 times 7 equals 49. Okay, so there you go. It's 7 multiplied by itself to get 49, so the square root of 49 equals 7. And just remember, you can also multiply negative 7 by negative 7 to get positive 49. So you have to include the positive negative sign there to indicate that the square root of 49 can be either positive 7 or negative 7. In this lesson, you've learned how to evaluate square roots and cube roots. Happy solving!